All right, wonderful. <laughs> yes, that, wow, a, a lot of things going on at the different colleges. Thanks so much for uh, sharing that. Um, I want to actually get started now, but please do feel free to continue to um, put that uh, information in the chat window. Um, and I want to welcome you. This is Una Daly, uh, Director of CCCOER, to our 2018 Summer Members Meeting. We have two twice a year, um, usually in December and June, uh, roughly, uh, where we come to you and um, uh, talk about the uh, what we've done this last year, of course, we always want input from you and, and thank you to so many of you who filled out our survey to let us know what you're looking for next year. And um, we've, we've kind of done introductions at this point and I really appreciate you doing that in the chat window. So I'm thinking we might um, skip over doing um, the 30 second introductions in person. Um, we, but I would like to give an opportunity to those who are new uh, to do that. And here's our agenda. We're going to go through a, a very brief overview of what happened in 2017-18 uh, from sort of our programming and um, etc. We're going to talk a little bit about the OE Global Conference, just a little bit. We have a few people who went to that conference in the Netherlands, and of course that is the Open Education Consortium's um, global conference that occurs once a year. And then we'll jump into the survey results and, um, and what we see as the continuing and emergence, emerging focus for 2018-19. And at all of these points, we want your input. So please feel free to use the chat window. Now I do want to introduce very quickly my amazing uh, CCCOER Executive Council. I think um, many of you know Quill West, who is our president, um, and she's also the OE Open Education Project Manager at Pierce College District in Washington. Cynthia Alexander has been a longtime member of our Executive Council. She's a faculty and education department chair at Cerritos College in California. Kiri Dolly is, a, is the digital librarian at Lord Fairfax Community College for the Knowledge to Work Project. Regina Gong um, is the Open Education Project Manager and also the Library Manager of Technical Services and Systems at Lansing Community College. Matthew Bloom um, has just recently joined our Executive Council and we're glad to have Matthew. He's an English faculty, but for the next couple of years, he's the faculty in residence for the OER coordinator uh, position, um, sorry, he's <laughs> the faculty in residence OER coordinator at Scottsdale Community College, but also within the Maricopa Community College's um, district-wide effort. Michael Mills is the vice president of the Office of E-Learning Innovation and Teaching Excellence at Montgomery College, Maryland, and we're very glad to have Mike join us this year as well. And finally, uh, Nikki Stubbs is the Education Technology Coordinator for the Technical Systems of Georgia. Technical System, Technical College Systems of Georgia. And we're very pleased to have Nikki join us as well this year. Um, and I do want to introduce um, our CCCOER specialist, uh, Liz Yada, uh, who joined us last fall and um, is continuing to make things work uh, very well within the consortium, helping us with so many things. So uh, wonderful group. And you will hear from um, most of these folks um, in just a few minutes as we get to the sections that they're um, contributing towards. We don't want to forget uh, our amazing uh, folks who um, used to work with us on a very regular basis and still are a really important part of uh, CCCOER. James Clapper Grossclag, our former president, um, who is the Dean at uh, College of the Canyons in California, Barbara Alowski, uh, Chief Academic Officer of the Online Education Initiative in California, uh, also a, a longtime member, in fact, a co-founder of CCCOER. Uh, well before my time, Lisa Young, um, who is the Faculty Director of the Center for Teaching and Learning at Scottsdale and also was the Tri-Chair of Maricopa Millions for five years. And uh, of course, Preston Davis, uh, Director of Instruction at the Extended Le Learning Institute um, of Northern Virginia Community College, a longtime um, Executive Council member as well. Any questions on that? All right, how are we doing on time? 
we're 11 minutes in. Okay, so I am, um, we're gonna skip the introductions this time, uh, but it looks wonderful. We have 24 people online and we're just uh, so excited. Please do um, jump in the chat window. We've got uh, Quill and a few others of us um, monitoring the chat and we'll, there'll be opportunities um, for you to um, share in person as well as in the chat window. Um, I want to once again welcome our new members um, to CCCOER. These are our members over the last um, year, starting in uh, end of July uh, 2017 through um, May of uh, 2018. And um, for those of you who might be here today, I wanted to give you a chance to say hello. I think we do have somebody from Nicolette College. Is that Cindy? Cindy DeMica. If if you want to say if you want to say hello, uh, I and and what your title is at the at your college, that would be great. And Cindy, I'm going to unmute you just in case you would like to say hello. Well, I, I'm not hearing anything, and I and um, she's saying hello in the in the chat. In the chat. Oh, thank you. Um, wonderful. Thank you, James. I I missed that. I need to, I need to clean my glasses. Anyone here from Allen Hancock College this morning? Nope. Um, uh, what about you know you can raise your hand if you I think you can raise your hand in the um, in the um, in the participants list and let us know if you would like to say something. Um, so I know I noticed that Ann Fiddler is here with us. Ann, would you like, Ann is our brand new member from CUNY, uh, City University of New York. And I wondered, Ann, if you would like to say hello and just introduce yourself briefly. This is across all the boroughs of New York City. And so we have lots of participation in OER this year because New York State got really well funded. Thank you for sharing that, Anne. And we're glad to, we're glad to have you um, as a member and of course all of you. All right, well, I'm gonna assume that no one else is, is speaking up um, because either they don't have a microphone or um, weren't able to join us today. But thank you, Anne, for doing that. And, you know, we are, we really um, appreciate our members. And in, you know, a little bit later, we're going to talk to you about a new member toolkit that we're um, designing. And I'll, I'll let Nikki Stubbs share that with you when we get to that point in our, um, in our meeting today. So very quickly, um, the in year in review, we had 12 webinars this year with um, 100 was our average registrations. We averaged about 50 or 60 attendees per uh, webinar, although a lot of people had good intentions of coming in. Of course, we do post all of these, so they're available later. We had five member meetings in October. We had one at Open Ed that was in person. The other four uh, are online. Um, we, as I mentioned earlier, we had 17 new members. We had 11 conference presentations where either CCC OER um, organized a panel or um, we presented. Um, and our email group uh, continues to be a, a, a very valued part of um, what we do here in the community. We had 46 topics on average per month. Um, and March and April were a high of 60 uh, topics. Um, so to tell you that that's the time that people are selecting their um, textbooks for the fall. So it's not surprising. Also, I, oops, a big, a big shout out to our five top active email posters. Um, and Amy, are you online? Amy Hofer from Oregon. 
Well, Amy Hofer is the OER librarian from uh, the state of Oregon, and I think you all know how amazing um, Amy is. She always helping folks within our community and of course within Oregon. Um, she answers questions all the time and so we so appreciate Amy and I'm sorry she's not here today for us to say that in, on, in person. But James Glapa Grossklang um, came in number two. Nicole Finkbeiner, um, who many of you heard from yesterday at our webinar, um, catch that archive if you didn't. Um, it was a wonderful uh, discussion with her and Quill, and also she, um, Nicole explained the OpenStax ecosystem. Tina Ulrich, um, Northwestern Michigan College uh, Library Director, thank you so much for all the work you do in our community. And uh, finally, Heather Ross, who is not even at a community college. I think many of you may know Heather. She's very active in our community, um, an, an amazing instructional designer at University of Saskatchewan. And she's number five. So we so appreciate these folks and <clears throat> how they help build the community. And now I want to turn this over to uh, James Glapa Grossclag, who is going to just talk a little bit about that um, conference that I mentioned, which is the global conference for open ed that happens once a year. Yeah, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. James here. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk briefly about the Open Education Global Conference, uh, again, that takes place every year, uh, which is the premier global event. Event, uh, for open education by the, the Global Network, the Open Education Consortium, our, our parent organization. Uh, this year was uh, particularly uh, uh, rewarding uh, for, for many reasons. First of all, uh, the, uh, the conference set attendance records. Uh, you see on the screen there, 386 attendees from 45 countries. So that underscores right away not only how large the conference is getting, but also the just incredible depth and diversity of viewpoints and, and implementations and perspectives on, on open education that you can find. There were uh, 169 presentations. It was uh, an incredibly rich, rich array of, uh, of topics. Uh, I spoke about the California Community College Zero Textbook, uh, Zero uh, Textbook Cost Degree Program. Uh, along with Amanda Coolidge and Richard Sebastian speaking about other Z degree implementations. Barbara, our friend Barbara Lowski, spoke about the uh, Canvas shells uh, built around OpenStax, uh, OpenStax texts that have been uh, created by the uh, Online Education Initiative here in California. Uh, uh, Quill and Lisa and Preston and Una and Rajiv uh, uh, formed a great panel about uh, uh, implementing uh, uh, Z degrees and large large scale projects, sort of the on the ground view, and our our friends from CUNY and SUNY also had great representation there, talking about their their projects. And I apologize if I'm if I'm missing anyone else. Uh, there were just a lot of great uh, presentations there, representing the uh, phenomenal work that's happening in community colleges throughout the United States and Canada. So it's it's really gratifying to see the growth in our participation and uh, the uh, awareness uh, globally of what the community colleges, uh, again, in the US and in Canada are, are doing, uh, leading open in many ways. Um, also, a, a particular focus of the conference was opening, opening the doors more broadly and really reaching out to open organizations such as Achieving the Dream, Creative Commons, Hewlett, uh, Lumen, uh, Spark, as well as our friends and allies from open science, open data, uh, open access publishing, uh, there was a real, real effort to uh, make the uh, make the connections amongst the different strands of open. Which, if you think about it, it's kind of silly that there are different strands. We're all trying to make education accessible to any everyone, everywhere. So uh, it was really gratifying to see that come together. Uh, the conference next year. Uh, the location is undecided at this moment. Uh, the conference shall be uh, held in the fall next year, so fall 2019, keep your eyes open. Uh, a, a call for proposals is out right now uh, for, for hosts, so uh, if your organization would like to uh, consider hosting uh, the conference, uh, you can find information about that on the uh, oeconsortium.org website. And uh, with that, I will kick it back to Una. Thank you. 
Thank you, uh, James, for sharing that. And um, I, I asked, I, there was, there's quite a few people online today, Anne, of course, included, and Quill, and um, I'm forgetting the other folks. Um, I'm not sure if Barbara's with us today who were um, at that conference. So please feel free to share any thoughts you have about that. It, it was wonderful to see all the folks from CUNY and SUNY there. Um, we were just swimming in community college people and usually it's a pretty small group that's able to come to that conference. And so it was really an amazing experience. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Quill now. Um, and Quill, I can move the slides for you or um, however you'd like me to do that. Yes, please move the slides. And then if you, if some, somebody from the leadership team wouldn't mind watching chat and interrupting me if there's questions about these slides, that would be great. Um, okay, so uh, first I want to take this slide just to say thank you to everybody who participated in our annual survey this year. I think we had more turnout this year than we have at least for the last three years in terms of completing the survey. Um, and one of the things that we really appreciate is that it seems that the survey was taken kind of at least in all of the locales of all of our members. So it's really important that people participate in the survey because um, it helps us to make decisions about where to go next. Um, and it helps us to understand what is important to our members so that we can um, do things that help all of you. Um, so uh, let's go to, yep. Yeah. <laughs> So we asked you to rank activities based on what was most important to you. And this is pretty similar. Our findings this year were pretty similar to the last couple of years in that the most valuable things we do as a community seem to be our email list and webinars, which is really great because we love doing those things. Um, but there was value found in our website and guest blogs. Um, we are thinking about revamping some of the things that we're doing in our guest blogs and the way that people interact with our website. Uh, and you will hear more about that later. Um, um, and then um, we were somewhat surprised to hear um, how open education we kind of ranked low in people's experiences. And we don't know if that is because of when it falls, because for some of us, it's falling during spring break. Um, or if it had something more to do with how CCCOER interacts with that. So we're going to explore that this year um, and get back to you around getting closer to the time of o Open Education Week because very few people ranked it as the most, one of the more important things, activities from CCCOER. Um, so this is kind of in order of ranking. Um, Luna, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide for me. So we also asked an open-ended question about what lessons you learned this year, what things were um, important in your learning. It was an open-ended question, so we had 39 results, <laughs> um, and I kind of broke them down into themes, and you can see the major themes that I picked out here, and I think it's really interesting that some of the findings that people had kind of all fit in the same general theme areas because these are the things that were most important. Um, and one of the, so, and I ranked them by also kind of how many fit in with those things. So it seems like a lot of people were concerned about professional development um, and that related to how to teach faculty how to find things to how to teach about open pedagogy. There were all kinds of questions about this. Um, and then going further down the list, you can see like, how do we support our faculty was one of the big questions. Or some of the things that made it in there were like, we, we thought we had enough people for support, but we don't, so we had to make emergency runs on it. Um, and then in other places, um, institutional support was a big finding for people. And when I say outside in there, I mean, most of the people who felt that this was a challenge worked on getting ground up support and top down support for their open education work. And some people even said, even though we don't have a movement yet, um, or we don't have an initiative yet, this is what we think is most important, or this is what we're working on. Um, and then the, the final one there is near and dear to my heart because I spent yesterday working, or I've, we've been gearing up for the webinar of yesterday and understanding what the commons is and how to caretake 
kind of the commons that is the place where we find our resources. And there were a lot of, of um, not, there were probably five different responses here that were related to um, easier access to the commons and better understanding of how to share back with the commons. So um, that's something that now I will try to find answers for all of us from because it's one of my questions as well. So um, this is what, this is kind of dealing with the open-ended question that was there. Um, so if we can go on, yep. Um, so this, the question about open education practices. So we asked what open education practices are you planning um, in the upcoming year? And we let people pick as many as uh, I think up to, well, we asked ask people to pick multiple ones. Um, and I find it really interesting um, that, you know, I, so it kind of makes sense because everybody's working on earning OER adoptions that 95% of the participants said that's what we're working on. Um, because you could be working on OER adoptions and on OER degrees at the same time and are because they're, you know, you need OER adoptions to turn OER degrees. But you can see our ranking here of how people, um, how many people responded to each thing. So you can see that a lot of our programming and work in open edu at, at CCC OER is going to focus on that OER adoption level and, and raising awareness level because that's where a lot of our members are. So um, you can see how that came out in the survey here. And I'm curious if there's any questions. I'm going to stop and pause. I haven't been reading the chat while I'm talking, so if there's anything big in the chat window, I'd love to carry it forward. Um, I, there hasn't been anything specific to this. A few people have shared about Open Education Week and how they've used it at their campus. Oh, I'm really, really glad to hear people say that. See, I think sometimes if we poke at things individually, we hear how important they actually are. So I'm glad. <laughs> um, so, as I said at the top of this section, we use this survey to help us planning, plan for our future um, and think about what CCCOER should be doing to further the missions of our members in terms of open education. So um, if, you have, if you're just now hearing about the survey and it's surprising to you, please get in touch so that we can um, include your thoughts in our feedback as we make decisions for the upcoming year. Um, and I would like to turn this over to Michael. Let's see, Mike, um, do you have your, do you need to unmute yourself? Let me see, I'll, I'll try and unmute you. Because you're on the phone, I think you might need to unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me now? We can, uh-huh. Okay, all right. I was having problems with my computer mic. Um, and, um, I was just saying good afternoon to everyone, or in some cases, good morning. Um, and to follow up on the survey, and I think that the partnerships aspect is a good segue to that, um, because one of the things that we often hear is how do we get people outside of their own institution to share material, share content, share ideas. Um, and we're going to focus this year uh, with the, the support of Paul Stacey at OEC with focusing on some inter-institutional sharing aspect of uh, CCC OER uh, and looking for specific themes or specific subjects that might be of interest to institutions at different different places around the, the country or in some cases maybe within the same region. So for example, there may be an OER course that people are struggling with or a subject that people are struggling with. So if we can get a group of schools together to tackle that, it, um, opportunity, it lessens the pain for everyone and then shares the uh, financial burden, if, if you will. So we're going to be looking into that, uh, looking at specific subjects or, or themes, um, and we're going to identify these focuses 
this focus and then seek funding as opposed to the other way around. So if we identify a course or subject area that we might be able to, to get funding, then we'll do it that way. Um, so, you know, for example, the, the regional flavor, there may be something in the mid-Atlantic region that schools are struggling with. Um, there may be something in Texas that schools need particular help with, the history of Texas, uh, history of California, and schools can band together in a regional aspect to develop the OER and then share it out amongst themselves instead of just keeping it within their own institution. And I'd be glad to answer any questions that, that anyone might have. Um, I see someone, Tina, has posted cultural anthropology um, and, and Quill has seconded that. So, you know, certainly that, that may be something that, that we take a look at. Um, great, thank you so much, Mike. Um, is, uh -huh. is there any specific way you'd want people to share those ideas with, um, with you? Well, they, they can certainly email them to me, um, and then I can share them with the executive committee. Um, if, if you want to handle it that way, we can approach the, the partnership focused um, and start it that way. Okay, that would be great. If you want to put your uh -huh. email address in the chat window, that'd be super. Sure, great. I will do that. Thank you. All right. And um, Mike, did you want to take the next slide or would you prefer if I did that one? Um, no, well, I can, I can touch on it. I think, you know, some of these, these areas are, are maybe areas that we can, we can focus on from a partnership standpoint. I think this wish list is probably more for CCC OER in general. Uh, but, you know, as we work together from an inter-institutional standpoint, there are certainly areas on this list that we can tackle together. Absolutely. And this, this, um, I wasn't able to do as thematic approach as um, Quill did. And of course, we, we had 39 responses to the survey um, about what all of you are hoping to do beyond 2018, 19. And it was a very interesting list. Um, and I found I couldn't, I, I was able to kind of half it by um, combining things. But um, I, I think there's lots and lots of opportunities to, um, collaborate on these. And I know in many cases, we, we do that already um, on some of the summits. Um, and um, we often um, you know, share across state, state boundaries and all that to, to help out each other. Um, Tina has posted in the, the chat that math for manufacturing is, is something that would be of interest. And, you know, that, that comes on the heels of a conversation Una and I had with the Bellwether uh, Consortium that is looking for possible partners in technical education and developing OER in the technical education area, uh, which seems to be a, a need from a number of different uh, vantage points at a number of different schools. So that, that's something that you know, we'll continue to explore and partnering with them as a possibility. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Mike. Um definitely a need and um, you know skills commons which is kind of which is the repository for the tact grants which were those technical um, curriculum and and so forth that was developed as for the technical assistance trade sorry the trade assistance um, grants out of the Department of Labor uh, they will also be expanding in the future as well. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities for that. So great to hear that other people need that as well. And Nikki also mentioned that. All right. Um, uh, great. I'm going to move this on and I'm actually going to turn this over to Nikki Stubbs to talk about a little bit about our website and uh, thoughts on the new member toolkit. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so uh, quickly, I want to mention um, Kiri and um, shared the new um, the new resources page um, for us on the listserv. But for those of you who maybe haven't caught it yet, 
um, this is the link and we want to make sure that you have um, an opportunity to go and look at that so briefly um, just an overview of what that list consists of um, is accessibility OER advocacy um, uh, evaluating your OER um, authoring and adoption options um, but there's a ton of resources on here um, for those of you who may be a little bit new to OER and for those of us who have been around the OER block uh, for quite some time. So it really just depends on um, what you're looking for and where you are um, in your uh, initiatives at your colleges um, as to how you can use those resources. So be sure to check those out. We'll put the link in the chat. And then the next thing that I want to mention is um, our new member toolkit. So um, what we are trying to determine is how we can better engage with you all, um, especially new members. Um, so when new members join, um, you know, everyone, you get a little packet of, of information from, um, from Quill and Una um, and, um, and some basic information. But what we would like to do is try to formulate something um, that shares a little bit more about CCC OER um, and the website and how to use it and how to interact with it and how to engage with the community um, and, and how to engage with the listserv. Um, I do know that as a fairly new member, I've been here for um, a year, Una, I think-ish, yeah. <laughs> a little over a year now. Yeah. Um, it can be intimidating at first when you come on to the, the listserv and there's so much happening, um, but we want to encourage members to participate with us. Um, and we especially want our new members who have joined, if you have ideas or suggestions um, that you feel would have been helpful when you joined, um, if you'll let us know, because we, you know, that's the goal of the toolkit is to kind of help new members get acclimated um, to the community and the resources um, and the people who are involved in the community so that you can build relationships um, amongst everyone. So um, we do want you to let us know um, if you do have, you know, a suggestion, if you are a member of another community um, who has a really great toolkit that you think, uh, you know, for new members that um, helps welcome them, please, please share it with us so that we can glean some ideas from other resources. Great. Thank you so much, Nikki. And would you be willing to be the point person on that? And, uh, sure, absolutely. Okay. So if you wouldn't mind sharing your email address, then that would be in the chat window. That would be great. And I know we have a couple of folks online today who are relatively new members, maybe within the last year, year and a half. Um, so we, you know, we really appreciate, uh, and, and actually I think Annie, you're, you may be one of our newest members that's on today, Annie Fox from Front Range. Um, so if there's things that you remember that would have been helpful for you in the beginning, we'd, we'd really appreciate that. All right, I wanna turn this over to Regina uh, Gong and Matthew Bloom who are uh, working on professional development slash webinars for us. And Regina, of course, has been doing that for um, some somewhat over a year now, and Matthew has just joined her. Okay, well, thank you, everyone, and thank you, Una, for the introduction. Um, so, uh, I'm going to share with you the results of um, the survey um, in terms of webinar topic. And um, as you've heard from Quill, um, webinars really are very popular. Um, you know, not only with our membership, but with um, others who are not members of um, CCCOER. So um, we thought of presenting it as a side-by-side -side, um, comparison of the 2017 um, survey results and this year's um, survey results. So um, for last year's, we actually had um, the membership um, rated. That's why you would see there that um, there's urgently needed and important. But for this year, um, we thought of changing that. And so we asked you um, to rank it according to um, you know, the degree of importance, with one being the most important. Um, and as you can see, there's parallelism. So there's, um, you know, number one is still the impact of OER. Impact 
on student learning uh, more than the, the cost savings um, is what I'm thinking. And then OER degrees also rank um, high among the membership. Um, open pedagogy, um, universal design and accessibility also ranks high. Um, finding OER because we still have a lot of uh, members who are new and who have yet to start an OER initiative. So um, that is important to them as well. Um, sustainability is important, especially for those of us who already have a mature OER um, initiative on campus and would want to scale it even further. Um, open licensing and copyright also um, ranks high. Um, there's one that didn't quite reflect what we have in the 2018. That's why it doesn't have a um, something on the other side. Um, uh, that is faculty leadership in OER and collaborating with other um, with student services and institutional le leadership. Um, equity, diversity, and inclusion is also very important for um, our membership, as well as librarians. Yes, librarians and OER. You can't have an OER initiative without a librarian, I'm just saying. So, and then open textbook platform. And um, Una, can you just please advance to the next one? Thank you. And um, the results from the survey really inform us um, with regards to the programming, the webinar programming that we will do for the next academic year. So um, hopefully the topics that we have offered for the past year speaks to what you wanted us to um, offer. And these are just some of the uh, webinar topics that we have um, done the past year. And then the next one. So this is just um, arranged by date from uh, last year up until um, yesterday, which, is, which was our last um, webinar for the academic year. And as Una mentioned, we really have a lot of uh, people who register um, for these webinars. So, yes. So those are the things that we have in terms of um, our programming for our webinars. And for this year, we would like to shake things up a bit and so Matthew will talk about that. Matthew? Yeah, yes, um, so basically the idea here is that we don't want to um, just be kind of, uh, we'll, we'll kind of pick the topics based on the uh, survey results and that kind of thing, but we really want to reach out to the community and get some, um, uh, some help from everyone you know, in terms of providing some of the actual webinars. So if you have some particular experience or some interest uh, related to any of the topics, um, you know, any of the survey result topics or anything like that, we'd love for you to, you know, participate in a webinar, not just by joining, but by um, actually presenting. So what we've done is we put together this uh, Google Doc here. It's very simple. It's just your name, um, you know, the topic that you might like to present on. Um, if there's anybody at your institution that you'd like to bring on as a, a special guest or something along those lines, um, it is, I, I think it's just a great opportunity. It's the kind of thing that, that we've tried to do, um, not just related to um, OER, but other kinds of professional development things at um, our colleges in Maricopa is, you know, reaching out to faculty and trying to get them all, you know, involved in one way or another. So um, this is just, I think, a good opportunity for us to, to connect and really um, kind of crowdsource uh, here and share some of our experiences. So if you're interested, feel free to fill out that document and let us know. Great, thank you so much, uh, Regina and Matthew. And I know they've all also got other exciting ideas about um, how to um, make our webinars a little more interactive. Um, so stay tuned. All right, next up uh, is Liz Yada, our support specialist is gonna share a little uh, tech tip with you. Okay. Um. Okay, so on our, one of the questions that was asked was what additional information would be useful in the CCCO OER webinar? And a few people said uh, similar things about finding the OER suggestions on the website or a link to Larry Green's um, compilation of OERs by discipline. 
Um, so if I could share my screen, I will quickly. Um, oh, absolutely. There you go. <laughs> okay. Can everyone see the website? Um, so um, here's our website. So to get to that community email page, you go to get involved and go, click on community email. We've got a couple different ways for you to search the OER. One of them, someone uh, mentioned Larry Green's um, resource. So it's it's right here and um, I've already got it open. So you can see that Larry has um, organized everything by subject. So like people were talking about cultural anthropology, there's an anthropology section. Um, some people were talking about ESL recently. Um, there's no ESL section, but if we click on English, you can see it's composition, English 101, fairy tales, da, 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 and eventually we get to ESL. Also, the other way you could do this is because it is one big um, web page, you could use the search feature of your browser and you know see I've got uh, ESL already in there, and um, it'll find everything for you that way. If you, if there's something that's you know that that uh, Dr. Green hasn't made a, a search term for. The other way to find resources is you can, um, going back to this community email page, you can search the archives. So if you click on that, it's going to take you to the Google group. It might ask you to sign in. You don't actually have to be signed in. This is shared publicly. So um, you can search through all the messages. People were talking about cultural anthro. Um, so we'll just search for that. And you can see there's a few a few results, um, so, so something to get you started. Um, so that is it for for me. Oh, hopefully that cleared it up for you. And let me just stop sharing. Thanks so much, Lee. <laughs> so we, I think, we at it. Um, also for um, Dr. Larry Green with us today, but um, the uh, work he does to compile all of that wonderful OER that everyone recommends. All right, Quill, I think it's back to you now. Yay, I get to talk about October. <laughs> um, so as you can see on the screen, um, October 10th through 12th is the Open Education Conference um, in Niagara Falls, New York. I'm very excited to go see it um, and, to, and to meet up with all of you at the conference. So for the past couple of years, we've been doing an open ed meetup. And the idea behind the meetup is that we all get together um, or people who are attending the conference can get together. Usually we try for either after sessions in an afternoon or last year we did it first thing in the morning one morning. Um, and it's an opportunity for us all to get together and say hi and talk to each other um, and just build more community. We are hoping that someone would like to volunteer to help us plan this meetup. Um, last year, I believe Lisa and Liz and Una carried all of the weight on planning our meetup. <laughs> so uh, we would love to hear from people, especially people who are local in New York, to help us um, plan this year's meetup. So if you're at all interested, please get in touch. I'm going to put my um, Gmail address in the chat window and you can contact me through Gmail. Okay, Una. Um, and then, of course, we have many opportunities for you to continue to get involved. One of the things that was pretty clear in the survey is that people wanted to volunteer and help, but you, a lot of people weren't sure what to do. So here are some things we would love to have you help us with. Um, of course, we're still collecting case studies from institutions on your experiences with OER. There is a template for that. You can see that there's a, a bit.ly URL there. Um, if you would like to write a blog post for our CCCOER blog and or suggest a topic, you can also do that. Um, as you know, we talked. To, I just talked about a conference meetup at Open Ed, but if you're going to a conference where you think other open education people might be there, let us know and we'll see if we can help you put together a meetup at that, at least an opportunity to get together and have drinks after sessions one day or 
you know, coffee, if that's what you're into. Um, <laughs> and then um, if you, you just saw actually, and there's a chat a link in the chat window for suggesting webinar speakers or volunteering to be a webinar speaker yourself. Uh, this community works because it is a community and people volunteer their time um, and expertise to the rest of the community. It's part of maintaining the commons. So we invite you to be a part of that. We would love to have your participation. You don't have to be, um, do it 100% of the time, but anything you can give would really help us to grow our community. Okay. Um, and then this last one is my our opportunity to hear from you and what's going on in your world. Um, it looks like we came out with just nine minutes. We are almost exactly on time. I'm proud of us. Um, <laughs> so if there's anything you'd like to bring up for the good of the order, please raise your questions and suggestions. You're welcome to use your mics or the chat window. We are watching. Um, this is Una, um, and while people are thinking about, um, I don't want to hog the mic, but um, I, I did mention in the chat that um, both Nathan Smith and Matthew Bloom just shared a write-up with us in the last month or two about their OER adoption case studies um, and um, kind of the, uh, the journey they've taken. And of course, Matthew had a five-year journey to talk about. Uh, Nathan had about a two-year journey to talk about. Um, so I don't know if either Matthew or Nathan would like to talk briefly about that or someone who's struggling with something out there and would like to ask the community for some help with something. Well, I mean, if you want, I guess I can very briefly um, summarize the, uh, the, the, the journey, as you say, that we went through with Maricopa Millions. Great. Um, so yeah, just to, I'm just to keep it short, obviously it's, it's written up there so you can see the details, but um, as you said, it's a five-year journey. And, and I think that was the reason why we waited so long to do the case studies, because it really um, kind of came to a, um, a really a moment of evolution this year you know it was it was originally not a permanent initiative that we had we had a set amount of funding um, it was going to be a five-year initiative to try to encourage faculty to adopt OER across our 10 colleges and um, so there was a, a basically what what we did, and I wasn't even part of it at the beginning. I was doing my own thing, um, but it was Lisa Young, who um, has been mentioned a couple times here, was one of the original um, folks involved in it, and they, they had a committee set up um, at the district level. Our, our district is, like I said, composed of 10 colleges, and so we tried to get people from all the different colleges involved in this kind of committee that was um, developing a plan to do some grant funding to try to get faculty involved in creating their own OER or remixing and adopting. Um, and one of the biggest things, I think, when it comes to um, not just our ability to gauge the amount of um, you know, like savings that we were providing for our students, but also just to get the word out to the students and to faculty about open resources was that we were able to get a search filter embedded into our um, find a class. So when students went to go actually search for their classes, they could just click on more options and then down there, they, there was a, a low cost, no cost filter. And so then it would only show the courses where faculty were using OER or other low cost uh, materials or, or no cost materials. So, um, so, so the, kind of combination of the grant funding to get faculty to adopt and, and uh, adapt their materials and that combination with the actual student awareness events that we held um, turned out to be pretty effective in the end and we estimate that we saved um, our students across the district about eleven and a half million dollars over the, those five years so um, we're pretty happy about that and now we're transitioning into a, a um, it, we now basically have transitioned the, the, the initiative into an actual ongoing part of our academic affairs um, 
at uh, the district level. So it's no longer just a temporary thing. The, the initial five-year thing is over, and now they've created a full-time um, faculty assignment. Um, and uh, so it will be an ongoing assignment, and I happen to be the first one to, to do it, so I'm excited about that. But um, it's now been institutionalized in a good way. <laughs> Great, thank you for sharing that. And uh, Matthew, because institutionalizing the adoption of OER and open educational practices is, is a really um, wonderful outcome. And something I think everyone is stri everyone on this list is striving for. Um, I don't know if anyone else wants to share. Um, I know I, um, I, I, we heard from Kate Hess, uh, who's out there at Kirkland Community College in um, Iowa. And she said that uh, they're checking in with uh, their faculty, they did a survey this spring uh, to see how they can adapt their OER program to be more, um, I guess, faculty friendly. Do you wanna chat about that, Kate? I know we all hit some bumps in the road and maybe you have some insights you could share. Hi there, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know, I feel like, uh, I just kind of take the process kind of a year at a time, you know, um, just kind of see what works, just keep asking faculty, you know, what do they need help with? What, you know, what kind of support do they need from the college? Um, and I guess what I've been hearing is that um, uh, faculty who have been trying to adopt or you know reviewing resources they more seem at least here they seem to be kind of going away from the idea of um, you know putting it together piecemeal with c combining a lot of different sources and really want just a cup one or two um, you know, maybe back to the kind of open textbook model where they can, you know, just grab, uh, you know, chapters from a couple different titles and they're kind of ready to go um, without a lot of adaptation needed. Um, that seems to be kind of what the, you know, the issue of, of the time needed to, to review materials, what that's turned into here. But yeah, the interest in actually adopting a number of faculty adopting has gone up a lot just over the past year. Um, and they do appreciate, you know, support of library, of librarians, um, helping them locate resources and evaluate resources. And I have questions on, you know, copyright and fair use and Creative Commons licensing. Um, our bookstore has gotten, uh, has been getting requests to create course packs again, which they hadn't been doing for a while, and or you know not as not very much. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been active, but I don't uh, quite know how to characterize it. it. Almost seems all over the place. Well, great. I'm glad to hear about that growth. Um, Kate is one of our longest members, <laughs> so it's 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 fun to hear. Um, yeah, but it's fun to hear that there's progress and um, yeah, yeah, and, and and tapping into what your faculty uh, are interested in now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and let's see. I would anyone else like to share out there? Grab the mic before I pick on somebody. <laughs> I think we have room for, we have time for at least one more because we did start just a couple minutes late. So I hope you don't mind if we run over just a, a minute or two. Um, and anyone well, so on my- This is Nathan from Houston Community College, if you can hear. Yeah, hi Nathan, sure. Hello? Yes, go we ahead did? Nathan, we can hear you. Yeah. Actually, Nathan, I'm not able to hear you right now. Um, you kind of, you came in and you went out. Maybe, maybe there's something wrong with my computer. I don't think we can hear him, Una. 
Oh, okay. Thanks, LeBaron. It's not just me. Okay. Right. Sorry about that. Well, Nathan, while we're waiting on you, um, well, LeBaron, how would you like to share something? LeBaron is uh, the Dean um, for Academic Affairs Specialties at the California Community College. Would you like to share anything? Sure, I, I can I can give a little update on the um, on the new cybersecurity collaborative that we've been working on. I think I shared a little bit at one time when we talked about it in the ZTC, but um, we have four colleges that have agreed to collaborate with each other. We took the uh, one of the TAC grants, you mentioned that earlier, and, um, and you, you talk about how things come together. Uh, at the Open Ed Conference, after listening to Jerry Hanley talk about the Skills Common and the cybersecurity program that was there, we connected with him, got access to that um, curriculum, um, <clears throat> and then uh, invited colleges to uh, come and talk to us about being in a uh, collaborative or consortium to offer that curriculum. So we started out with 12 colleges and and four have agreed to participate. We then looked at the curriculum with our subject matter experts. Uh, and this was developed five years ago, the cybersecurity curriculum was. And you imagine cybersecurity five years is a lifetime. So we had uh, the subject matter experts, the deputy navigators to take a look at this. Um, and they have since updated this curriculum and we consolidated the curriculum from 13 courses down to eight courses and are in the process now of, uh, of working with the four colleges to offer this in a 35 week uh, sequence of eight courses and short term courses that will uh, produce graduates to uh, set for certifications in cybersecurity. So they'll be going through as a cohort and we'll be starting up instruction in spring of 2019. So Very that's, that's a quick three minute uh, a thing. And as we get more meat on the bones with this, we'll be more than happy to come back and share greater detail. But it not only combines OER with zero textbook cost degrees, but it um, demonstrates how colleges can collaborate with each other and offer different parts of the program uh, with students getting that certificate at the end. And so it'll be, as I said, a full ZTC. Um, and uh, we'll be very excited to, to see how this all works out. We're looking at starting with a cohort of about 40 students. All right, well, thank you so much for sharing that, LeBaron. Um, we'll, we'll look forward to hearing more as that evolves. Um, Yesterday, we had somebody who shared that uh, they were starting a programming group, uh, so in general computer programming uh, through Rebus. So it's, there's going to be some really wonderful open textbooks for the computer science cybersecurity area, which has been, there's been a need for this. So I'm really excited about that. Um, Nathan, did you, did you end up getting back your microphone? I'm afraid you might have to read Nathan's um, case study for now. We'll try and get that resolved in the future. Sorry about that. Well, we are just about at the at the 60 minute time frame. Um, uh, we, if anyone else would like to share, we have one more minute. Um, otherwise, we really appreciate you coming. There's lots of opportunities this summer to work with us, uh, Mike. Um, Nikki and um, Regina and Matthew mentioned um, specific areas where you can work with us. Um, so, and if you have any questions about that, please feel free to contact me directly or, or them as well. If you, if you, but if you didn't catch their email, feel free to, to contact me and I'll make sure you get connected with the right people. So thank you so much for coming today. And um, you're an amazing, <laughs> an amazing group and, um, we all appreciate working with you and supporting the work that you do. Have a wonderful summer and we'll be back in touch soon um, about what's coming up in the fall.
Thank you, everybody. Happy summer. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye.